Hi, I'm looking for... Stadia? So that we can take games to the next level together. No, I'm... I'm not seeing any lag. Are you seeing some? That's fine! No, I don't have to beat the game. Here, here. No, come here. What's up guys, it's Jason here and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Rise and Fall of Google Insight. Google is well on its way to dominating all arenas of our life, but did you know that they too can misfire? The tech behemoth already has its claws in almost every facet of your life already. For example, you are watching this video on YouTube, a free video sharing website with user made content. Except it's not really free. We are the product. Google is collecting data on us to create accurate online profiles of every person on earth. When you need to look up something, you use Google, or at least 90% of people do. You all know the type of content that people search using Bing or DuckDuckGo. You know what that means. Oh. The point is that Google is creating a future in which we are cataloged, sorted, and coerced into buying from the cradle to the grave. The dystopia is real, it's coming, and it will be colored red, blue, and yellow with a green L. It's not too hard to imagine a world in which corporations with their outsized influence will eventually displace governments as the dominant powers. There is historical precedence. If you don't believe me, look up the etymology of the phrase Banana Republic. Companies can and will throw money at a problem until it goes away, oftentimes at gunpoint. Demolition Man is a 1993 sci-fi masterpiece in which Sylvester Stallone and a blonde Wesley Snipes duke it out in Los Angeles. Way back in 1996, Simon Phoenix, played by Snipes, a violent crime lord, is caught by John Spartan playing by Stallone. Although Spartan caught Phoenix, there was a collateral damage. Hostages were killed. Phoenix and Spartan are both put in a cryogenic suspended animation as punishment. In 2032, Phoenix is thawed out into a utopian Los Angeles, free from crime and violence. He predictably causes tons of mayhem. LAPD dethaws Spartan to capture the violent Phoenix, a zany and violent action movie plot. During one scene, the architect of the new crime-free world asks Spartan to Taco Bell. Spartan laughs, but someone explains to him that Taco Bell is the only restaurant left from the fast food wars. A literal war with Taco Bell's army coming out on top results in every restaurant becoming Taco Bell. It's not that difficult to imagine that Google could pull a Taco Bell, hire a mercenary army and take over the world. We already have the console wars between Xbox and PlayStation. The next logical step is an actual shooting war. Google tried to enter the arena with its Stadia, but its efforts were stymied. How did humanity stave the inevitable domination by our Google overlords for a little bit longer? The ugly truth is that we didn't do anything. Google is the only thing that can stop Google, and that holds true for the Stadia. All right. The gaming system failed because Google overpromised, underdelivered, and relied on its tentacle like reach to create a market for its in house game development company and next gen console. Let's go over the rise and fall of Google Stadia. But first, if you wouldn't mind just typing that like button for the YouTube algorithm, I would really appreciate it. The more engagement a video like this gets, the more likely the YouTube algorithm is to push it down for more people to enjoy. And as this is a brand new YouTube channel I started this year, it helps me out a ton and it's free to do. I respond to all comments and feedback. If you think Google is a monopoly with too much power, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for new videos each week. Thanks for doing that, and now let us continue on with the rise and fall of Google Stadia. The Overpromise Google Stadia launched November 19, 2019 to much fanfare. The behemoth multinational technology company planned to have an initial offering of 22 games and promised to dominate the world of console gaming. This cloud-based system promised users gameplay on Chrome web browsers and smartphones alike. The ancillary story called Stadia Games and Entertainment was supposed to compete with Xbox Live, PlayStation Store, Steam, and Epic Games Store. Billed as the future of gaming, the big launch shook up gaming for a short while with its $130 installation kit and $10 subscription service. Standalone games aside from the subscription service would be available for purchase in the Stadia stores. The big shiny new thing was Stadia's ability to share game progression between the Xbox, PC, and the Stadia. Google hired hundreds of developers and new employees to start pumping out AAA titles from its studios in LA and Canada. No longer would people have to split time between mobile gaming, console gaming, and PC. Stadia was supposed to provide an all-in-one gaming ecosystem for all gamers. The excitement was tangible. 
Games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Baldur's Gate 3 were slated to be released on the platform, but behind the flourish and excitement, there were some real issues. The Under Delivery After a year, Stadia still slumped. From 2019 to 2020, the system added a sparse 6 games, bringing its total offering up to 28. By comparison, the Xbox Series X has 202 games, and the PS5 has 275 each in their first year. Just to compare to the last generation, Xbox One has 2,704 games available, and PS4 has 3,172 games. The lack of games was one nail in Stadia's coffin. About the launch, when Google sent Stadia out into the gaming zeitgeist, it was slim. At the time, people thought it was sleek and efficient, but problems bubbled to the surface. People didn't want to port their games to Stadia because Google was a dumpster fire for them. First of all, Stadia didn't have a following or a fan base yet. The platform wasn't resonating with console games because there just weren't enough games at all. It didn't capture the imagination of PC gamers because the PC does everything a Stadia does, but better, arguably. Moreover, if you have ever tried to contact Google's customer service, you know that it is better to chew on glass. This same lack of client relations makes it challenging for small gaming studios to trust Google. Google should have provided massive benefits for software developers to send games to Stadia. Instead, Google being Google relied on the reach of their name. They believed that their tentacles extend and dig into everything. Small gaming companies can take a hard pass on that and shop their games for better publishing houses. Google being Google just isn't sexy enough, nor is it a financially sound decision. Google promises that Stadia continues to grow and the big games will be on the platform eventually. And two years in, eventually still hasn't come. There are still only 100 games available on Stadia. That begs the question, who is the system supposed to attract? Console and PC users have almost no reason to abandon the vast catalog available to them. Google also has a history of murdering services. The Google Graveyard has more than 20 dead popular products, including Hangouts, Google Play Music, and Go Links. As a business, Google has the prerogative to move on from projects or services. Still, the swiftness with which the executioner's axe descends is head spinning. Google very well may eventually smother Stadia too. In 2018, Google removed the clause, don't be evil, from its code of conduct. It's kind of hard to trust a company after that. After all, the implication is now that the company will be evil or tacitly accept evil. Either way, it does not inspire confidence nor trust. Google had a chance to smooth over Stadia's issues and build confidence. They took a different approach. When pressed about the anemic game offerings, Stadia rep Patrick Siebold said, The publishers and developers we talked to want Stadia to succeed. Of course, the publishers and developers that Siebold talked to want Stadia to succeed because their success was tied to Stadia's performance. The Tentacles a share of Google is north of $2,000. The net worth of the company is close to $1.4 trillion. To put that in perspective, if Google was a country, it would be the 17th most wealthy according to GDP. The company has impressive wealth, the wealth that mere mortals struggle to even comprehend. That's why it's so puzzling that the massive tech company has been so miserly with its incentives for developers. The game plan is to pay the AAA game developers and ignore the smaller ones. Right now, that plan seems to be short-sighted and Stadia gamers are left languishing, as much as one can in the video game space, with a limited library of games. Forget boxes, forget consoles, just your games, your screens, and electric air. Because the baby game library and Google's general wishy-washiness with Stadia make consumers fear the other shoes drop, Google could have and should have assuaged its customers' concerns with a strong statement of support for the Stadia. None have been forthcoming. Gaming is a cutthroat industry. When Google made a splash in the competitive market, it did not put its best foot forward. Stadia was unproven and lacked customer goodwill, unlike the PlayStation and Xbox. PlayStation revolutionized the gaming industry with its business practices that helped game developers succeed. Xbox shipped with the world's first Ethernet port. Then, Xbox Live rocked the gaming world. How can Stadia hope to compete with the likes of the PlayStation Store or Xbox Live? Even more, how will they compete with Steam? What about the Epic Game Store? And don't worry, I didn't forget Nintendo either. But they kind of do their own thing, don't they? We're looking at you, Wii U. It's such a crowded market, and Stadia and its game store aren't gathering any ground. 
In the movie Serenity, a sublime Chiwetel Ejiofor plays the operative, a religious zealot assassin. He asks the mercurial Mal, played by sci-fi favorite Nathan Fillion, do you know what your sin is? Do you know what your sin is, Doctor? If the operative were to ask Google, the answer would be pride. Pride is their biggest sin. I wonder if you it's pride. A prideful Google relies on its omnipresence and Black Mirror-esque reach on the globe's population to make Stadia a success. Gamers are a famously fickle bunch though, and that arrogance might not work. Companies, especially shady companies like Google, have to build up a customer base. It's not enough for a tech giant to rely on its Google brand. One of the ways to build up that customer cash is to treat customers like they matter. Offer more deals and features. Give the fans even more, Google. But they really haven't, so Stadia isn't doing too well. The literature concerning Stadia's lackluster launch is extensive. Google is the world's broker of information. It must know what people have said and say about their product. Simply burying their head in the sand seems to be Google's preferred approach right now. What Google could have done better is take a more conciliatory approach to the gaming community. A simple statement that assures gamers and developers that Stadia is part of a long-term plan would have been great. This would do two things. One, assuage the feeling that Google doesn't care about gaming. And two, build goodwill with a group of vocal dissidents. When a gamer is mad, they screech loudly into the void of the internet. The loudest screechers attract the most attention. For proof, check out any gaming forum or subreddit where you will find constantly evolving and devolving discourse about the new controversy in gaming. Google needed to learn from the mistakes of other gaming companies. If you remember, Microsoft's launch of the Xbox One was putrid. It took the software giant a full quarter to see that the product was trash and the launch was a disaster. Once they identified the issue, the company hustled to fix all the problems, including a total and quick renovation of the system. Google had the chance and almost limitless resources to fix it, but all in all, they really haven't. The Stadia team hasn't really done itself any favors in community outreach either. You can file this under Know Your Audience. Alex Hutchinson, creative director of Stadia Games Entertainment, made a significant misstep when talking about game streamers. Hutchinson tweeted, The real truth is the streamers should be paying the developers and publishers of the games they stream. They should be buying a license like any real business and paying for the content they use. His comments opened up a helpful and constructive dialogue between gamers and the company. And if you believe that, I have some beachfront property in Colorado to sell you. No, seriously, DM me on Instagram. I'll sell you the property in Colorado. It's, it's so beautiful on the beach. It's so good. The site is huge. The ocean is huge. No, the dialogue was neither helpful nor constructive. Gamers and streamers united in lambasted Hutchinson for his comments. Even though he made the comments from his personal Twitter, he still carries the backings of Google. For most people, what Hutchinson said is Google's policy. It seemed like one of the world's most profitable companies in the history of humanity wanted to charge streamers, and that didn't sit well with people. Then there was the Terraria kerfuffle. The indie game is trendy and has impressive staying power. It has been around for about a decade and is regularly among the top played games on Steam and is available on practically every platform. Seems like a slam dunk addition to Stadia's small stable of games. Except Google took the path of most resistance in getting Terraria on Stadia. In February of 2021, Andrew Spinks, the game's developer, was locked out of his Google accounts. After a public spat about customer service and his inability to get the accounts restored, the indie developer ripped his game from Google. After a ton of backlash, Google finally relented, and the game is slated to be released later this year. The damage was done, though. It's hard not to connect the Terraria debacle with Google's decision to shutter their in-house Stadia gaming studio. On February 1st, 2021, Google ditched its developers to the surprise of everyone, especially its developers. Stadia Games and Entertainment SGE VP Phil Harrison had spoken of the company's progress in a January 27th interview with Kotaku and teased a new strategy going forward. That strategy was a complete shutdown of the gaming arm with no major games shipped. This screams that Google just doesn't care about the gaming marketplace. To punctuate the point about Google's disinterest in gaming, look no further than the ouster of Jade Raymond from the Stadia team. In 2019, Raymond, who cut her teeth at EA and Ubisoft, joined the Google team as a vice president in charge of Stadia games and entertainment. Her role was to help SGE to create exclusive content for Stadia. 
After a tumultuous year and the death of SGE, Raymond bolted from the company to form her own game studio. Raymond's abrupt departure leaves tons of questions swirling. It appears that the games she worked on will be shelved indefinitely. As previously mentioned, Google does not engender trust from its users, and this is another salvo in that barrage. A short few weeks after her departure from Google, Raymond announced via Sony's blog that her new company, Haven, was being launched. Stadia seems to be dying from its wounds. First, it cut off its game development limb, SGE. Then it began to bleed talent with the likes of Spinks and Raymond. Now it's caught in flux with no apparent natural path forward. As Google progresses forward, they're spending less money on Stadia. It is beginning to feel like the gaming platform was someone's harebrained passion project. While the cloud service does run games rather well, it is a far cry from the promised transformative and revolutionary gaming experience consumers expected. And that brings us to today. All I can say is thank goodness that Google made a misstep here. The company already knows everything about us and its AI is top notch. It's comforting to know that at least they don't dominate in the gaming space for now. Who knows what the future might bring? In 2032, we may all be praising Stadia. And while this video is most certainly not sponsored by Google Stadia, if you'd like to try a free trial of Stadia Pro, you can go to tiny.cc slash Google Stadia. You'll get two months to try all the pro games out and see if you really do like the service, and I'll get a month in return for you trying it. And it wouldn't be fair if I didn't mention it, but you don't need the pro membership at all. You can buy what game you want or just play the free games that are available like Super Bomberman R Online or Destiny 2. They don't even make you put a credit card in anymore as long as you're not going for the pro subscription service. Again, this was definitely not sponsored by Google Stadia. I don't know if you could tell by the way I was condemning them the entire time. And just like Voldemort who doesn't die unless you destroy his horcruxes, Google does never really die. It just bides its time and it will take over the world when we least expect it. Either them or Disney. After all, Google is always watching. So with that said, thank you so much for watching my video. There was a significant amount of research and production that went into making this video possible. As this is a brand new YouTube channel I just started this year, if you enjoy videos like this, please click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you haven't seen already, check out my video on the rise and fall of New York or the rise and fall of Discovery Zone. As always, stay happy and healthy and stay tuned for another episode of Company Insight next week.